is my voice so soft? Uh, this episode of Game Bite is brought to you by Jinx.com. Use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout to save yourself 10% off of everything gamer and geek on their website. Yes, everything, every little thing, whether it's a, C, a former C9 Shroud t-shirt. Yes, former, because he has his own uh, brand and clothing line now. If you're looking for a Halloween terror shirt in, in honor of Overwatch's uh, newest craze, well, uh, this year's Overwatch craze. And, uh, you yeah, know, if, if you want to represent the Horde of the Alliance in Battle for Ezeroth, use the promo code QUITSONG underscore 366 at checkout when you do, and save yourself 10% off of everything there. Everything. Everything in your shopping cart will be 10% off. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, just use the promo code. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. I'm Britt. This is Jermaine. Uh, welcome, everyone. To Game Bite. Game Bite, of course, is your podcast for a lighthearted take on gaming views, gaming news, and so much more. Sometimes we talk uh, talk about actual video games. Sometimes we just talk about ourselves for a long amount of time until it gets boring. Uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, your deep dive, your weekly deep dive into video cam web tutorials. Yeah, like sometimes we sometimes we get a little excited. Yeah. Ah, so, sometimes we get carried away. Sometimes mm -hmm. I cry. Uh, sometimes I hide. Yes, I am your host, Harold Sylvester. As you can see here, uh, so, some people might think, Harold, he just spelled Harold wrong. No, he did not. That is my actual name. And I'm the local Pac-Man high score holder runner-up. Uh, broadcasting from the Quitstalling Media Studios studio. Uh, this is where I broadcast weekly. Uh, sometimes daily, sometimes bi-annually depending on my mood. And I've got a co-host with me today. He was missing last week, but this week he's feeling a little more chipper, a little more internet-y. You know, he's, he's, got, he's got the PLDT gods on his side. Welcome, Quit Stalling's resident tavern keeper and former child star. Welcoming you into his inn, that is not an innuendo. Uh, it's the Fury Bot himself, Mick the Guzman. How you doing, brother? I hate PLDT. <laughs> I'm, your just, fault, gonna, I'm yeah. just gonna flat out say say that now. I hate him. I'll and if you want to know why I hate him, tune into the after show later on. Yeah. Then yeah. Yes. Uh, hey everybody. Uh, yeah. Hey Harold, I missed you guys. I missed you. I missed Diego, but Diego's not here, so I can't say I miss him. The, everyone, including Human Panda, you know, like yeah, like Human of, Panda. We we've I all missed, missed you. All of them. Yeah. We've all missed you, dude. And uh, it's great to have you back. I want to welcome everyone right. back to the show. Guys like Human Panda, uh, Heisengard in the chat. Hey, hey. There we go. There oh, we go. man. I, I have to slouch a bit because I have to fit in the box because I was going above here. Oh, were you? Yeah, I can go. fix that. Don't worry. Just, just sit no, comfortably. No, no, no. Let me do it. Let me do it. Okay. Come okay. on, man. Okay. There we I got go. You. All right. Nice. Well, sorry. I had to cough there. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, guys, this is this is Game Bite. We do this weekly, sometimes with Diego Z, sometimes with Mick, sometimes with n neither of them or both of them at the same time and none of me. It's amazing. That's a lie. That's a lie. I, I always have to be here. <laughs> um, oh, no. But yeah, it's super awesome that, that, to, to finally have you back, Mick. You've been gone for about two, three weeks. Uh, no, two shows worth, I guess, is what we can two say, shows right? worth. Two shows worth. Two shows uh, worth. I went I, on it, vacation it, the first week yeah. and then... Uh, and then the internet thing happened. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Bummer. That's pretty Bummer. bad. Yeah, but I'm back. I'm refreshed. I am. I am. I am. This is Mick 2.0 right here. Oh yeah. wow, the the resurgence. Yes, of, the of resurgence. Mick yes, re-energized. Da, da, da. Yeah, this is Mick 2 Legacy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's great to have you back. Um, Glad what? Yo, know, we, we we ask this at the start of every show. You know, this is open to everyone in the chat. This is open to those of you watching the VOD. Just tweet us, you know, hashtag what I've been playing. We really need to sort out that hashtag. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's go with what I've been playing. Hashtag what I've been playing. Mick, man, what have you been playing? Well, uh, it's been a few weeks and I've still been playing a lot of Monster Hunter World. Autumn event mm. is here where we I basically farmed everything that there is to get. For this, mm -hmm. for, for our very first autumn event, autumn festival event. Uh, apparently, you can get the strongest greatsword right now, which is the uh, Wyvern Ignition Impact. Um, it's now what, until what I is think the greatest the strong sword. 
Uh, it's a it's a great sword. It's the strongest one that you can get in the game. Uh huh. Yeah. And it's actually no. The, the cool thing about this is that it's actually a um, it's actually it actually was a di uh, a fan designed uh, weapon. It was designed by a, a just a normal Monster Hunter fan, a normie. and he apparently just just a, just a normie, you know, <laughs> not, not some do not some in collaboration with not some in collaboration with with uh, a really good game developer from Capcom. Nope, uh, they they had collaboration a with Steve Aoki. <laughs> <laughs> it has that X thing, you know, when you have, like, when you have like, collaborations. <laughs> Monster Hunter X X. Number one fan, like that. <laughs> but then, yeah. Um, aside from that, layered armors, which is their version of glamour, it's pretty cool. cool. Um, aside from that, I went back to Hearthstone finally. Oh yeah. Because uh, my laptop was broken when I went when I went out of the country, so I had no game to play aside from from Hearthstone on my phone. So that's pretty cool. I went back to that. Excellent. I took I took I took some time off because it was getting I got burned out. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. I got I got freaking burned out with the game. And last but not the least, I picked up a new game. Well, I picked Ooh. up two games. Okay. Um, I'll mention them, but <gasps> I'm only playing one of the two because the other one was just way better than the than the first one I bought. So I bought uh, Mega Man Eleven. Yes. New, yeah, it's 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 really fun. I like it. Very frustrating though. It's not like the X series where you can just jump on the wall. Like you guys know that, right? In the <laughs> chat, come on, back me up on this. You guys know that when you play Mega Man X, you could like jump in the, you can jump against the wall and you can like jump on the wall so you can go up, right? Here in yeah. Mega Man, no, no, there is no jumping on the walls, man. Yeah. Yeah. Re regular Mega Man is allergic to regular to wall jumping. Yeah, regular Mega Man is also allergic to charge shots, but apparently, you know, after ten. 10 um, installments they finally figured out oh we should probably add that that's actually a pretty good oh, thing did they add. finally put it in yeah you can you can even have the auto charge one you can actually put in the options where you're just constantly charging your your but your uh what do you call that buster arm i think buster x buster i don't know yeah yeah well, then, x yeah. buster is the one for Mega Man x but oh yeah Mega Man x yeah, yeah that's the, the no but yeah like that, that was always something yeah. like yeah that, that was sort of a skill you needed to have and you couldn't just exactly. like always hold down so now you can apparently now you can and here's the thing here's the thing um it reminds me i like i like the art style i like the the, the anime you know the the graphics graphics wise how they they just cool. made this it's really nice yeah. it it's not as good as not as ambitious as mighty number no. nine but again, come Mighty on. Mighty number nine honest. was super ambitious. Mighty number yeah. nine was super ambitious, and it really like let people a lot of people down. Let's be honest. We we yeah. were, remember that one where they were the people who um, who uh, go fund me that project, and then when they got their collector's edition, it wasn't even like they had to unfold the box themselves. We reported uh -huh. that here on Game Byte like a year ago. So I this so. one is yeah, a whole yeah. different story. <laughs> yeah, remember that? That was pretty bad. But then they also introduced this new thing where it's the um, like this gear system, where the active gear system is basically you can either slow down time, or you mm -hmm. can increase your damage, or you can do both at the same time. But remember that you, the storyline is basically you have a prototype version of it, while all the others have the real version of it, like the, the uh -huh. perfected version of it. So you, yeah, yeah, if you the, the people it, you get it from pretty much. There's a there's a cooldown, so that just basically like says, oh, you have a cooldown, so. We have you have to wait you have to wait a bit longer for you okay to use it that's it okay yeah oh yeah Blackman is a oh my god that guy's a bitch <laughs> oh okay can we stop he's... watching this it's giving me PTSD man he's oh, not the most god, I okay this. I was about to say he's not the he most really visually nice. appealing he was... but he looks great now look at this mo look at this version look of him Black it's pretty bad Blackman's pretty dope Blackman's pretty dope but he's also pretty bad man I mean come on, <laughs> Like even the mid the mid stage boss was just oh my god dude, the mid stage boss was bad. Okay. Oh wow. For his the level. Mid yeah, for his level. I wow. mean, there's no way that like I already put it at normal and normal is still pretty hard. I have to put it on easy because I oh my god. <laughs> Maybe I just suck. I don't know. Maybe I just suck. But yeah. Aside from Mega Man 11, I've been playing some Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I finally oh. gave in to my temptation. Oh. Oh. And I was thoroughly surprised because I am an AC fan. 
I am an Assassin's Creed fan. For better or I, worse. <laughs> yeah, for better. <laughs> any, any of the two, I guess. I didn't play Unity because it was broken. I played Syndicate because my brother bought it along with my PS4 that he gave as a gift. That was pretty mm. cool. It was a good game. I finished it. I loved it. And I think I skipped Origins, even if when we were in ESGS, they were like, they just went to town with their both. They hyped it hard. They hyped it so hard because apparently like Ubisoft Philippines worked hand in hand in making it. Also mm -hmm. with this one, Odyssey was actually made also here in Ubisoft. It was in collaboration with Ubisoft Philippines. So that's pretty that's cool. That's awesome. You know, we pride. And <laughs> the, game is, the game is so different now. Um, I chose Cassandra, by the way, if you guys are wondering. I chose ah, the yes, girl Cassandra. over the guy. I was about to ask, are you, are you an Alexios or are you a Cassandra? Okay, I want to point something out. I read an article about how good their the character the characters are, like how they would be differentiated from each other by how okay. their how their how their face would move with certain dialogue, how they how their tone or voice would be different. Okay. And of course, how the body movement is in general. They changed it up. It's pretty cool. I kind of like Cassandra because the thing is in Greek history, it's like it's unheard of to have like a girl, a girl fighter at, during that time. A like uh, like a female of, warrior, pretty much. A female warrior, female mercenary. That's like, that's okay. like, there are female mercenaries, but there are more male mercenaries than females. So I was like, hmm, girl power. So yeah, why and not? Cassandra is like a name that kind of rings in, in, in Greek oh, history. Yeah. So like, it, it, it's, it's really cool that, that they have this character. So you yeah, chose I'm Cassandra and... You, I chose Cassandra. How, have you finished the game? Oh, hell no, dude. It's a long <laughs> ass game, dude. <laughs> it's a long game, dude. I've been yeah. playing for like three days and I'm still level 12 because I oh, have wow. so much stuff to do. I have so much stuff to do. Okay, so I'll get into that later and I'll, I'll get into okay. the I'll get into more details later. But okay, all okay. I got to say is if you guys enjoyed uh, this is not your ordinary AC. Okay. If you thought AC Origins was like, oh, it's a step away from the traditional AC. Well, this, holy, oh boy, you are in for a treat if you played Od if you play Odyssey. I swear. What about I you, Harold? Though, what have you been playing, man? Oh man, I've been, I've been, I've been playing my usual games uh, yeah. as of late. So I've, I've been enjoying Spider-Man. So I'm, I'm just taking my time. <laughs> of you course, know, like everybody's got to take their time, dog. And, and apparently that. Reddit uh, r slash gaming is still full of people taking selfies in, <laughs> in Spider-Man. No, you know, that's that's also a thing now in, in um, AC. That's a that's a thing now with the new oh, games. Nice. You know, in AC, I, I, like if you open your map, you just see pictures on the map. I was like, what are these? It's just them taking pictures with like taking selfies with like funny stuff. Like, the funniest awesome. one I saw was they got there's this bronze statue of like um, a Greek leader. And then they just took a selfie with the balls. <laughs> it's the bronze ball. And then the the caption was bronze balls. No. Oh, <laughs> it was pretty good. Nah. I mean, they're, they're getting creative, guy. They're getting creative, bro. Oh, I don't man. know. You guys are pretty good. I mean, like, oh, wow. <laughs> and it's yeah, not even with just really friends. Good. It's like with everyone around you that are playing now in the APAC region or something like that. It's oh, it's wow. it's. I like it. I, I do like it. Oh, but yeah, dude, carry on. Carry on. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man. No, but yeah, that's that's the cool thing, right? So, like, I've, I have been taking my time with Spider-Man. Like, I'm, I'm just milking every side mission, uh, doing all the, the, the side yeah. quests as well. Every civilian in need, I, I feel compelled to help. You know, so I... Just... <laughs> that is cool. so... Doesn't it Doesn't it feel great to be overpowered by the time you go to the main quest? Dude, it's so good. It's, it's so good. It's so I'm, good, I'm... right? It's and a, and you feel like you earned it because you are doing all these side quests. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, aside from that, I've been grinding. I've been on my weekly World of Warcraft raids uh, with my raid team, Bacon and Keg. Shout out to everyone at Convert to Raid and Bacon and Kegs. You guys are awesome. Uh, we we named our our mythic five man team. Uh, make you you know people do mythic plus dungeons now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but who's uh, your mythic five man now for Bacon and Kegs? So we're we're called Mythic Brew. Which is kind of like a, a spin on bacon and kegs, because like kegs, right? Nice. Like beer. Uh, and yeah. since we're like the morning crew in in the in U.S. time, because we're full of like Australians and and 
and Australians. people who have the night shift. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're like, oh yeah, let, 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 it also kind of symbolizes coffee, you know, mythic brew. So yeah. mythic brew. It, it's it's exactly. pretty awesome. It, it well, works with the whole you, breakfast. Have you guys? And, and have you guys broken your personal? What, what was your What was your record though for highest highest? Uh, Fifteen. Impossible? Last last expansion, it was a it was a fifteen. Uh, yeah. We didn't and they the, achieve when they revamped it. It was like, oh my god, it's harder. Yeah. So at the moment, my personal best is a five. A mythic uh, plus bad. five. It's it's alright. Like again, I'm taking my time. I'm trying not to get burned out with these games. So mm -hmm. I really like. I'm also leveling my horde character to max now. Uh, he's like this badass torn torn chieftain looking paladin i'll, I'll see if i can find a screenshot as i'm talking but yeah like it, it's been pretty fun uh I'm, I'm enjoying like a lot of people on reddit and all those other platforms are kind of being really critical of of the game at its current state uh which is pretty good because you know when when you have a fan base that's passionate it's never bad uh it's never bad, it's never bad right so uh, that's cool but for me, I I've just been enjoying like the the, the pace. I've been taking my yeah. time. Oh, that, I found a good, I found a pretty cool screenshot of my my yeah. I'll bring it up on That's screen. Cool. But yeah, so that is good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's all just um, it's all just me taking my time, pretty much. And mm -hmm. I I can't speak for other people because again, other people have been fairly critical, and that's their prerogative. But uh, I I've just been a hundred percent enjoying uh the content that's been that's been laid out in front of us and the fact that this expansion is more of okay you have to play both horde and alliance to enjoy like the full yeah. story i think it adds full to story. it so yeah, yeah this is or my, my just watch Shaman, noble eight, uh, seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or noble 78 just to yeah, understand I think it is both sides i think it is 87, 87. Yeah. yeah oh question did you re-roll though for, for for this expansion or are you still an illidari oh i am still 100 percent a alliance demon hunter uh, a night nice. elf demon hunter, but you know, I, nice. I'm an altaholic, so I play everything. Oh. <laughs> I, <can't... laughs> I actually, you know, my friend was was telling me I should I should go back and I should try being an affliction warlock because he's been hey. looking for a really good warlock. I was like, hmm, does it have pets? He's like, no. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> oh, a caster without pets in, in <laughs> wow! Oh my god, it's the best. It, like the I think best it's more about like kiting at this point, like at this current yeah. build, because. Uh, when when you're an affliction warlock without a pet, like it's more about dot and run. Yeah, dot yeah. and run, and then you hard cast when you're actually when you know you're safe. Yeah. That's exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been Damn. I've been enjoying all sides of, of the expansion, and yeah, that's that's good. Dude. Yeah, that's I, good. I those two games are just keeping me busy because of all the other stuff that's keeping me busy. I can't really play too much of of other stuff, but yeah, I've. I've that's that's why we have Twitch, so we can watch people play games like Black Ops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and I... Overwatch, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch though, just just on that. Of course, that's important. Grind. Yeah, it's, it's 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 the Junkins, it's the Halloween thing. Yeah. Yes, yes, Junkenstein's Revenge is is, is in vogue Revenge. again. I finally got so. to play it by the. Oh, that's another thing I forgot Ooh. to mention. I finally got to play it the very first time. I was nice. I was like, Are you having fun? Not... Uh, I only did it once just for the box. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty good, though. It was pretty good. I got to play the other ones on arcade, though. I'll get stuff, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just want more skins, man. I just want more skins. I want my Ana skin, because Ana's, like, the only the only healer I could actually play properly. <laughs> according she to my friend. She has a super friend, cool skin. She, yeah. has, she does. Oh, yeah, yeah. She yeah. does have a super cool skin, and I got to get that. I, awesome. I'm, I'm missing, like, 1K gold. It'll be my first one, though. We my first Anna skin, and I play her nice. a lot. Like if you check my, if you check my stats, she's the she's the healer I play the most. I'm oh, all excellent. the healers. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so Heisengard in the chat said he remembers uh, the X series, the Mega Man X series, where you could jump on walls. That was super fun because yeah. in the first level, it teaches you to jump on walls, right? It, it teaches you to, yep. to it drops you down, and you're like, oh no, how do I get out of here? And then oh, jump think, on the wall. Yeah, and that was before. Yeah. Uh, they had those really, you know, baby holding your hand tutorial. So you have to figure yeah. out, oh, if I jump on the wall, I'll start sliding and I can keep going. Uh, yeah. Mega Man, or at least the previous Mega Man games, have always been good about conveyance and mm -hmm. letting you learn uh, things like boss mechanics by the mobs that are coming before the bosses. So yeah. it's always something I appreciated with 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 the, with the Mega exactly. Man games. And yeah. Uh, I, I have they done that with this version of the game? Oh, with with this version, you have no idea how the boss is. 
I'm gonna say that now. Oh no, that like, sounds bad. Like they're catering. They're catering. Okay, here's the thing. Here's what you need to know about this game. Oh no. This game is basically uh, it pays homage to the hardcore uh, side scroll side scroll lover, like the okay. hardcore ones who can speed run us. They're like, oh, we heard you speed run our games. Let's oh. see if you can do this. Ha! And it's. Just, like they just throw Mega Man 11 in your face and you're like, oh my God, this is hard. But a lot of ha! people have finished the game. I've seen people finish it. Our, our good friends at Game of Call, the jo Jopes and JC, have actually oh, shout finished. Shout out to those guys, man. Jopes, shout JC. out to those two guys. I've heard them scream so many times on stream because they just died out of nowhere in the fire stage because the fire stage is also hard. But I feel like every stage is hard to a oh, certain yeah. extent. But once you start memorizing it, once you start figuring out the movements of each 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 person, it's the same exact thing. You do it, it's just a memorization game. If you die, just redo it again. They won't even count it. They're like, oh, oh you have no. two lives. If it doesn't if it doesn't die, we won't put it in your stats. I don't think that any Mega Man X series had that. They yeah. didn't really count how many times you died or how many times So you won't feel bad. You're okay. just like, okay, I died. Okay, I died. Okay, I died. It's like Crash so Bandicoot. All yeah, over again. And, and I don't mean to to divert too much because we, we do have just a little bit of news to talk about later. Mm -hmm. I, I, I watched a video recently about how not punishing failure uh, really encourages people to stick with the game. It, mm -hmm. it was a TED Talk from like a couple years back, I think. And also, I almost forgot, we also have to give a shout out to Rob, who's also one of the Game Moco guys who plays uh, games. Yeah, also Rob. Uh, Ro yeah, Ro Rob, is, uh, Rob is super cool. We met him when we guested mm -hmm. on their podcast. Uh, yeah. So, like, the fact that uh, a game like Mega Man uh, also doesn't punish you for failing so much encourages the, the player to stick around and be like, okay, I will, I will keep doing this, keep fixing and, and, and iterating and rep, uh, repeating the things I'm doing right until I figure out what, how to get to that final part. I, I'm, really, exactly. I'm really positive about that. Uh, uh, a lot of games nowadays really uh, tend to forget that... You know, you, you don't have to look at a strategy guide before you play the game. <laughs> to, exactly. Because it's always so much more rewarding, right? Like, when you when you figure it out on your own. Yeah, no. Um, once you start... Once you realize that, you know... Oh, this is a Mega Man game again. That's mm -hmm. when you... Especially if you've played before. That's when your head starts going. Okay. Memorize these. Memorize this, bro. <laughs> Memorize this. You got this, bro. You got this. Okay, no one's gonna stop you if you just memorize this one part. It's like, <laughs> you know, but I, ha I hate it because it came to a point where I'm just super triggered at mm -hmm. certain things. Like, oh no, I damaged myself. I remember that part and I made a mistake. <laughs> like, I memorize how the where they would spawn. Where the if I'm like moving in that direction and then yeah, I just yeah. see them pop out here and be like, oh okay, I'll I'll just slide down <laughs> and then all of a sudden I, my brain farts and then I just jump on it. Uh, like, oh no, I got damaged again and then I just fall in a pit and I die. I'm like, yeah. oh, I wasted, I wasted it, I wasted my life. That, that's one of those things with, with games like Mega Man and maybe yeah. Mario. Yeah. Uh, a lot, actually, a lot of side scrollers where uh, when when you when you make that one mistake because you're trying to you're trying to let yeah. go of your urges to to jump or to, exactly. to press the button yeah. for too long. Man, and then it's so rewarding yeah, it's when you so finally clean. do you, it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be clean. Yeah. You gotta be clean. Your, your movements gotta be clean, bro. You're gonna yeah. you can't you can't overpress. Also, yeah. I just want to point out um, the voice actor for Mega Man. Oh my god, that was so good. good. No, offense. oh bad. No oh, offense. I don't like it. He sounds like a snooty rich kid. Oh, when he no. dies, he goes, "Ooh!" It's just like that. It's just like that. You can clip that if you like, and you send it to him. <laughs> I have a word with him on Twitter. I don't care. You could give it. You could clip this and send it to him. I'll have a conversation with him on Twitter, or maybe uh, yes. G yeah, game bite where we pick fights <laughs> with voice artists. Where we pick fights. Oh boy. Yeah, but yeah, that's all. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Well, everyone in the chat, let us yeah. know what you've been playing, and yep. uh, we'll, we'll give you. We'll, we'll read it out right now. Uh, Heisengard in the chat says, "Really, the voice acting is bad." I feel no. triggered because Heisengard is actually a voice yeah. actor himself. He's a voice uh, voiceover artist himself. Nice. So, yeah, that, that's always a bummer. And you, you, you're not quite sure whether it's uh, it's yeah. the actor themselves or maybe it's the director who just wasn't, it, you know, the director. It. 
I, I personally think that, you know, they, they, they got Dr. Wily spot on. They got Roll spot oh, okay. on. They got okay. Blockman. They got every every villain spot Everyone on. Everyone else. <laughs> yeah, but then when they chose Mega Man, they're like, I always expected Mega Man to be like a very, you know, like a kid on his, you know, like 11. Like an 11-year-old kid. Like 11 okay. or 12 years old. He's a preteen. Okay? And you, like, you, you know you expect his voice to be like somewhat forming but it's not this is okay. sounds like he's like a 15 year old or a 16 year old that that you know for some reason he's still not hit with puberty it's like it's like puberty was telling him hmm i'll give him a little bit of the low voice but at the same time i'm gonna go hmm i'll keep the high voice yeah it's like that it's it's confusing it's confusing because oh, and plus you can't take him seriously because <sighs> oh no that's a bummer. He doesn't sound. Uh, he doesn't sound intimidating or chat. Or uh, he doesn't sound like the intimidating figure that Mega Man really is. Okay. I mean, you could argue like I, I can't quite put my finger on, but Mega Man Legends was kind of good, but he wasn't really that intimidating. Like uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't that he's intimidating. It's it's how you portray each Mega Man, in my opinion. Okay. It's like how Mega Man X is just badass. Yeah, so you got, it's like, like uh, yeah, because I'm because I'm a rebelling teen. <laughs> I'm a rebelling teen. I'm against this government that doesn't like me. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. F the police, like that. F the um, and then Mega Man I love is basically Zero. like preteen. Yeah, I, no, it's like I secretly love Zero. <laughs> I wish we could be together. <laughs> I cried. I I wept. I wept a puddle of oil, motor oil, when he died. <laughs> spoilers <Yeah>. spoilers <laughs> that, wait wait okay uh before that's, we move on i, I okay. want to remember is that because of sigma was sigma the one that, he that corrupted him because he had, a, he had a corrupted he had a corrupted yeah. system and okay. basically he he had a virus he had a virus inside him and then he it basically turned him evil so mm -hmm. the nice thing about x5 yeah. was that it gave you the you had the opportunity of being able to either like you had a time limit to kill these specific specific bosses and you had mm -hmm. um a total of i think 16 maybe i'm not sure but then okay. yeah if you kill all of them you get specific parts to take out this thing that's bringing out bringing about a virus that is yeah. plaguing the whole area it's yeah. pretty cool um their take on it was really dope because it was a time trial like every boss that you kill takes out one hour from like dead in nature yes yes that was so cool i love yes. that I love that so much. And then whatever decision you make, it'll either it'll either um, make Zero evil or make him good. But at the end of it all, spoiler alert, he dies. It never mattered what you chose. Never, <laughs> whatever you did, he will uh, die. <laughs> that's a bummer. No, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Heisengard in the chat says, I personally prefer the voice of X from X4. Oh, yeah. The acting itself was shoddy, but the voice was yeah. A-OK -okay and fits the character. It, it, I agree. Fit, yeah. Oh, you should hear the X6 Japanese version. The, the X6 Japanese X was pretty good. Nice. Yeah, nice. it was pretty good. I really liked Iris. Iris was my favorite one from X4. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like Zero's voice. So when he was shouting, Iris, Iris, it was just a shout out like... It doesn't sound so good anymore. <laughs> I right, thought well, it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was so good. I really did. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a bummer. Well, mm -hmm. Mick, we, we've talked a lot about ourselves. Chat, let us know mm -hmm. what you've been playing, and we'll, we'll call it out during the show. Let us know. But it's time to get to the news. This Week in Video Games. Yes! It's This Week in Video Games. And This Week in Video Games... Is brought to you by the Quitslaw and Geekcast. Yes, the Quitslaw and Geekcast. Watch me, Wancho, and Derek. That's supposed to say Monday now. <laughs> I still haven't fixed it. Watch as we. Yeah, watch as we talk about all things schedule? geek. Sorry, what's that? You finally got a fixed schedule? Yeah, yeah. So, no watch me, Sensei Humor, and Wancho Saldana talk about all things geek, whether it's Star Wars, Power Rangers, uh different strokes and and, and whatever you <laughs> <Different> like <strokes. laughs> hollywood squares what? check out the check out the good song you cast every mondays at 12 noon oh man i gotta change that video yes check it out and yeah. we're also now on spotify just like game bite 
Good song, Geek yep. Jazz. Check it out. No. Every- All right. Mick, we have so much to talk about in terms of gaming news, but we'll, we'll try and we'll try and be as concise as possible. Red mm-hmm. Dead Redemption's sequel. All right. Red Dead was far from needing a redemption because it is one of the most beloved games in PlayStation history. But mm-hmm. we are fortunate enough to get a sequel. And yes. sequel is out in how many days, Mick? In like three days? In eight days. Eight days, man. We're this getting is getting it in eight days, guys. This is one of the most highly eight anticipated. Days. Maybe maybe nine. Ever. I'm sorry. I mean, it might be nine because I think that October 26 release date is oh, for you know America. Like a year. It's like America date, but I don't know. They they normally like release it. If they say the 26, it really drops on the 26, regardless okay, so. of where you are. So mm-hmm. it's soon. It's it's yeah, like soon, very soon. A few more uh, days. A week and a half from now. So good stuff. Uh, I can't wait. But you did want to talk about something not so good about Red Dead Redemption, mm, which is, yeah. you know, with, with all things good, there must come a little bit of bad. And this is mm-hmm. super new. This is a story that dropped like in the past week, I think, right? Uh, in a few, just a few days. It's only just a few, a few days, days ago. Okay. Yeah. So w- what did you want to bring up, Mick? So basically in an interview with New York Magazine, the Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser mentioned about having... A working 100 hour work weeks in in while they were trying to create the dialogue of this whole game and to actually quote what he said um he 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 said that uh the polishing rewrites and re-edits of rockstar the rock rockstar does are Im- are immense we were working 100 uh, hour weeks several times in 2018 um and just to quote just to cut what he basically said because it's relatively long um he boasts that the game the finished game includes 300,000 animations 500,000 lines of dialogue and a ton of coding at the same time they even mentioned that you know npc dialogues have about you know some npcs have like 80 page script dialogues 80 70 or 80 pages it's 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 crazy because they want it to be as immersive as the first game was. Yeah, and yeah. This is this the, the yeah. rock star polish that we've. It's the you know, rock star polish. Yes, and here's the thing: the people, a lot of people, took to Twitter, took to their social medias, with with what he said about 100 hour work weeks, and um, people came out saying that it was um, it like. If you have to do 100 hour work weeks, there must be a problem. Mm-hmm. Like the thing is cuz overworking, like if you are all on the same page and if, if you all are just doing the, the right thing, then you guys wouldn't have to like do overtime. Mm-hmm. And I th- and you know, after, you know, that that you know, a lot of people getting mad about 100 hour work weeks, I think that he um the he, Rockstar had to release a statement to try to retract what he tried to explain what he basically said and yeah. what he was what he was saying is that Dan Hauser along with three other people who were in charge of the story of this game worked 100 hour weeks not the entire team that's working on it include not the it, he didn't really speak about how like the, the the graphics team or the or the gameplay team or the motion something team were working that long hours as well no it was just them it was just just it took them 100 hour work weeks several times this this year yeah. just so they could fix the narrative yeah and but in comparison actually, though real quick in comparison if you work a regular nine to five job for five days a week that's like 40 hours right uh, if that's you like do, 40 hours so that, that's that eight hours a day yeah. uh and then if you do the extra hour because you know you you do overtime or that's that's just the nature of your that's job a, that's about that's 45 really hours a week yeah. if you do mm-hmm. monday to friday so they're doing a hundred hours, which is a little over double that. That's almost like sixteen hours uh, for five days, or like mm, that would prob- probably go out as twenty-five hours. Uh, am I right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Twenty-five hours. Uh, oh, sorry, twenty-five hours a, a day. Oh no, divided by seven, that's about eighteen hours a day. Eighteen hours a every day. Every day, Something though, like if you're working every, every day. Every single day. Every it's about day. sixteen and a half yeah. hours a day if you're doing monday Something to saturday like yeah monday to saturday and you only have one day off but i know i and that's see eight that hours of sleep yeah so that's 
<laughs> yeah. I think it was, like, personally, the reason why I wanted to bring this up, because it actually begs the question, and I'm probably going to ask you guys there on the chat, and of course I'm going to ask King Harold, which is, you know, is overworking really the solution for certain things? Like, to make a game really good? I mean, like, mm -hmm. to quote, not to quote, but rather one of the people who were, like, I have, I have to look for that tweet. Give me a second. Go for it. But he basically said that if if you're working 100-hour work weeks, there's something wrong. Oh boy, like right, like like this. They're, they're basically bragging about crunching, crunch like going crunch time with this. And I think it yeah. was Adam Orth who developed a VR game Adrift that said, um, "If you are if you are crunching, the people above you, the people above you are not doing their job correctly or are incapable of doing it correct, of correctly mm -hmm. at all." Um, and then he also said that they are not the problem. They are the problem, not you. You can usually spot them a mile away before you even set foot in the studio. So it's basically just saying that, okay, if you're doing 100 hour work weeks, then that means someone from up there is not doing the job. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, you're you're like crunching, crunch time, you're like hitting deadlines. So it, it begs two questions, actually. I'm gonna, one is, is overworking really like a solution or crunching? Is it something that is brag worthy? or like something to build hype for and of course second and i think this is the more important one are deadlines important for for these specific games do you feel yeah. like that making like triple a titles like this do you need deadlines because i feel mm -hmm. like it all it it creates it creates an atmosphere where you are pressured to finish work and you can't do it half assed right yeah. so you're it's that's a lot of stress well, yeah it's a lot on your plate so yeah, no, Harold. I wanna, I wanna get your thoughts on this. Well, you know, like your, your first question was, what again? Sorry, yeah, it was. It, um, is overworking... overworking really like a solution? And do you feel like it's a way? Does it always guarantee really good work? Like there, no, that's, so, that's, a, yeah, that's that, an easier. Way that's the thing, though, right? It, 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 the questions that, that we're posing are, are they, they don't, they don't encapsulate everything because we, we live in a time where media in general glorifies overworking we see it in tv shows where mm -hmm. the highest paid executives or even like founders of, of startup companies like you see in in silicon valley kind of really do overwork themselves and th that glorification of of being a workaholic is not really the healthiest to to the majority of 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 the people consuming that i mean you know you you will have those times where crunch time is a thing uh you could have the best laid out plan and you're still gonna have times where you where you have to put in extra hours uh it's just that when when you have to do it every day is is yeah. the issue you know like yeah and hopefully it's not your entire work staff that has to do it like yeah. it's admirable that some of these guys because when you mentioned that the people who when rocks are attract sort of retracted the statement they were mentioning that no, no, it's the higher ups that are actually doing it, not just the rank and file yeah. people, not the coders. Um, like, well, one, it's still not the best situation. Yeah, yeah, it's still not the best situation for a person, mm -hmm. but at the same time, when you really are passionate about something, you know, you time could fly. There's, there's a lot of explanation to it. We can't just get get it get into it in like a 15 minute span. Uh, but those are really you know those are questions that. that people have tried to solve and tried to ask uh in thought experiments i i think like my my point of view on all of this is you know for 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 people that aren't the heads it shouldn't you know it's right that it shouldn't be expected of them to have to have all these uh 100 hour days on a consistent basis uh and you know Sorry, your, your question hour, asks weeks. Yeah, yeah. Weeks. sorry yeah 100 hour sure. weeks uh and you know the 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 point of someone higher up isn't doing their job if if a lot of these lower i hate I hate saying ranks but you know the people under them the people that they're managing uh the have to work all, yeah <laughs> the people that are being managed <laughs> have to work all these hours then yeah. it's possible uh and that, that's why i brought up the fact that we live in a modern era uh that, that glorifies us because a lot of expectations can come from success because mm -hmm. rockstar have had hits like grand theft auto 
uh, all the Grand Theft Autos, and they've had oh, huge yeah. success with Red Dead Redemption. Uh, investors, oh, this is the this is the annoying part, right? You, you get investors that you have to satisfy, uh, mm. and they're not all cutthroat, but at the same time, these are people who put their money into these games. Uh, these yeah. are the people who put money into your company, and you know they they do expect a certain level of professionalism, and they, that's why they have deadlines. Is so the pressure kind of builds and hopefully it, it pumps out a good product instead of a half-assed one. And, mm -hmm. you know, greater men have tried to come up with better answers for how to properly schedule something like uh, like a video game or any end product that, that, that's supposed to hit market at a certain time. But at the end of the day, like, I, I don't think I'm equipped to answer this, but I just, the, the minor points, I guess, are, you know, some people are going to be passionate enough, especially people who are higher up, who are very passionate about the games that they're making, will want to work a little longer or will forget about time and end up working longer than they would have wanted to. Yeah. Uh, sacrificing health is not good, is, is what mm -hmm. I want to say. Yeah, But that's true. Uh, but, you know, there, there are a lot of minor factors that you're going to have to account for, and it's difficult. It's difficult. And running a successful company is difficult. Blizzard are feeling that right now. Like, we always shoot back to Blizzard, yeah. but Blizzard are feeling that right now where they're, they're targeting release dates at these set times of the year, and people yep. are, are blaming those those faster release times now uh, with, with Battle for Azeroth. They're saying, oh, now, now that they're trying to hit these, these earlier targets, the games aren't coming out polished. And yeah. video game balance is not easy, uh, mm -hmm. especially for a game with with as high uh, with a multiplayer function. Imagine the fact that you know Rockstar with a game like Red Dead doesn't really focus on on multiplayer, but look at how beautiful the game is. <laughs> look at how much mm -hmm. effort it takes to have those those eight pages of dialogue for NPCs. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you you can have overworking. Uh, be a positive thing to some extent, but at the same time, you know the human body can only take so much. It's really, it's really hard to address this. It's, it's a very difficult topic. I actually, want to ask a professional about this now because it's, it's difficult. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. difficult because let's say you're the head of Rockstar, you're the, you're the president of Rockstar. You're managing yeah. how many people? Hundreds, if not yep, thousands exactly. of people. So, how many studios are you gonna outsource to to just fill in like like sceneries? How many? How many um, how many people are you gonna get just so you can do motion capture to make sure that the the three D the movement of your characters are just very human like and yeah. they won't glitch out or something like that? How many coders will you get to to just clean out the, your code so that you yeah. so they look through your coding and make sure that there are no errors so that they don't there are no so like game breaking bugs. There are, yeah. There's a lot of things that go into gaming aside from just, you know, the narrative. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that overworking is, is, um, it's not really the norm, but it does happen wherever. It's becoming industry. a norm because of how it's becoming a it norm though, because yeah, how, how the media glorifies it. I, I feel like that's how it is, how entertainment and, and society like, like show it. But the truth is like, look at, look at like, like, like. Oh crap! I have to go. I have to go past. Um, I have to go past gaming now, and okay. just go specific corporate lifestyle, which is basically in a country in, in Europe. I'm not sure. I think it was uh, Sweden. I'm not sure. Sweden maybe or Switzerland. They basically uh, passed a law where you can only have six hour work work weeks. It's oh crazy. wow! Six. Oh sorry, six hour work days. So you only work thirty hours a week, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. and 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 productivity has, has gone up. I'm not sure if it was Sweden or Switzerland or it starts with an S. That's, that's all I know. And basically there, uh, a lot of this, this trend is, is coming, is showing that a lot of people work better when they're, when they're well rested, when they have time for themselves, for the family, you know, yeah. for the friends, right? Cause it's not just and physical health. It's also it's mental health. You're, you're trying physical, to avoid burnout. Yeah. You're trying to avoid getting burned out because if you're burned out, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically or anything, any form, um, you, you, you tend to do half-assed work. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're, if you, if you like lack sleep for like, if you've been sleeping six hours a day for like two weeks and you try to go back to gym, 
and you try to jog, you will do a half-assed work because I believe or that eat, eight yeah. hours is yeah. Even if you <laughs> manage to do like a hundred percent of your capabilities, yeah. like you're, you're gonna suffer in the long run. It's not good in yep. the long run. You know, your, your you're mental or physical it. health is gonna suffer. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, well, let's go. Let's go to chat. Look, look, they read. Oh, this is a. Oh, go one. for it, Mick. This is from Heisengard. I honestly don't think overworking is good. Uh, the, there is a term in Japan called karoshi, which mean where you basically overwork yourself to death. Honestly, yeah. it would take longer, but for the sake of health of these devs and everyone involved, it would be preferable to either hire more people or extend deadlines for more reasonable work hours. Yes. I get that. Um, yes. It, and I really feel like that, you know, the people who are willing to overwork themselves is different from those who have to work, have to overwork for, yeah. to reach a deadline. There is a difference between those people. And, oh, that's true. If it's, if it's a willing thing, willing, I guess. Because you're, you're passionate about what you're doing and you feel like, that's, oh, I'm yeah. on a roll. I'm on Adderall and that's like Adderall that's like great that's like morally that's like that's yeah. like the gray area though right yeah. that's like the it's like I'm ru I'm running on still, breakfast it's burritos it's still yeah. unhealthy but it's still yeah. unhealthy but hey you do you man we we can't really tell you how to how to do your job uh, it's like you're running on Adderall Red Bull and breakfast burritos from Army Navy ah uh, yes the the healthiest of, of meals yeah the, the 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 holy trinity of oh sorry hot pockets I take it back that's the holy trinity Red Bull uh, coffee, Red Bull, um, Hot Pockets, and I don't know if it was uh, an Adderall, I guess. But then, yeah, um, that's a very good, that's a very good insight, Heisengard. It 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 just shows Quality. that you know, it just shows that you know deadlines. I feel like that actually answers the second question. Like it 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 shows how deadlines is a double edged sword. I mean, it it motivates people, but at the same time, it also it, it also forces people. To just you know, to just cram and crunch, and it makes them, it, it it's unhealthy, man. It's it's really unhealthy. So this is this is a this is like a this is like a, a tightrope, man. This is a yeah. really thin line. We're, we're 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 crossing a really thin line right now. Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah, Human Panda twenty two on the chat goes, uh, it's either it's either the world of Red Dead is unique and immersive, or they did countless changes and probably no cohesion to the writing. It does, and to answer my question, it doesn't guarantee good work. A lot of overwork is probably just driven by pressure and imbalance of your priorities. If you can't take care of yourself, then all your hard work would be would all be for nothing because you can't finish it. That is yeah. true, right? And that plays to the whole burnout thing we were talking about. Yeah. So, yeah, great, great insight from the guys in the chat. Like that's great definitely insight. thank you, thank you for that. That's kind of, that's, that's kind of on the same boat as us, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you overwork in the long term uh, it's not going to be great you're going to have disgruntled workers if it's not you yeah, that's exactly. overworking uh you're going to have people complain about you know the health of your of your workers yeah. uh and then if it's you you know and whether you enjoy it or not you, you might not enjoy it for long if you're overworking yourself too much yeah so i guess that well hopefully that you know in their statement they did they did mention like he basically dropped the four people who were in charge of writing Mm -hmm. Red Dead Redemption 2 and then they've been saying that um, they've been like this is Dan Hauser speaking but it was it's like Matt was wrapped as a rock star statement mm -hmm. and then they were he was saying that you know Mike Unsworth Rupert Humphreys Laszlo and myself meaning Dan Hauser were were just um, were working on the story for about seven years Ooh, the senior writing dang. team they're basically the senior writing team and then they had to, to tighten up their the work that it's basically they're the masterpiece yeah because it took them seven years to make but let's not forget and i'm pretty sure we, we've learned this is that you know just because it took them this many years to make doesn't mean it's going to be good yeah i'm talking about you diablo I'm talking about you diablo uh unfortunate. Yeah. unfortunate unfortunate but yeah and of course um it's just that you know they've been working together and they feel like they could also do this like they were saying they've been working for at least 12 years and they've been working on different projects for rockstar and they feel like they could do this so mm -hmm. that's why they did it and um they were not speaking on behalf of all their workers but for themselves so i guess if it's if they're, they're they they really wanted to get it done then you know we, we 
we'll just we'll just let them do what they want. I mean, come on. I think that's how it. I think that's how we're gonna do it. I, Even Pat in the chat in the chat said <coughs> Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, Mass Effect. <laughs> hey, hey! I want to point out it didn't take them long to make it. Oh, didn't it? How out. long was that? How long was uh, like, Mass Effect? Think about it. There was like a when they finished the first three, it was just like a few years. Like they they finished the. The, the, the last installment was like 2000, like somewhat in the late 2000, the late 2000s, okay, early right. 2010s, I think they released that. And then they released Andromeda. It was, okay. it was like, wow, it's going to be, this is going to be so good. And then okay. meh, dialogue is like, <laughs> meh. Uh, voice acting was meh. Gameplay was a little meh. Character modeling was, whoa. It was, whoa. <laughs> it was, oh my God. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> Please, people, yeah. treat your workers right and treat yourselves good, and yeah, and, and always come out with the best rem- product. Yeah, I think the best advice I could probably give you guys is if if you're overworking and you feel emotionally drained, seek help. Mm. Seek always help. good, always it good helps. advice. Always no good advice. one will judge you for seeking help. Yeah, no that's, one that's good in this world, not even I, not even Harold, and who are we to judge? <laughs> who are we to judge? Of course, <laughs> or you're oh, watching yeah. us now. <laughs> So oh, yeah. you might think we're like har- harsh judges because we're pretty harsh about about you know yikes you know rockstar and their 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 work habits so yeah but oh, yeah. yeah all right thank you guys so, for, for answering yeah yeah hopefully hopefully Red Dead is released with with great aplomb and hopefully it's critically yeah. well received yes. uh, a week and a half left guys fingers crossed yeah okay oh I have I have a prediction though like go I, I will teach you guys a secret. This is how you know if the if the game is good. If you get it on PS4, the first thing you need to do, and I mean this, is you have to look at the day one patch. If the day one patch is more than one gig, you're in for a treat. Because it's gonna suck. Oh man. Let Can't me wait. give you let me give you let me give you examples. As- Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's seven, move gig. on. seven gig. Uh, what else? What oh, else? Man. Uh, wait, I'm, let's I'm thinking on. of let's a game. On. Let's move yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, no, like, look, look at it. Look, look. I'll show you how what good games are. Like, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, day one. Their patch was 400 MB. <laughs> what? What the hell? And it's 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 honestly a good game. Uh, what else? Um, uh, God of War. It was only 1.6 gig. Not so bad. It's still pretty good, right? <laughs> there was no game breaking bug. Oh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Day one patch. Two hundred MB. Just wow, saying. that's a record mm-hmm. for Ubisoft. Oh boy, oh boy. Even oh no, but you gotta give them props because they didn't really like have like day one big day one patches for the fractured but whole. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so props to them they've been they've been on a hot streak. well they did take their time with it like they, they did push yeah. out release for for a couple of months so yeah, yeah. that's good that's good yeah, don't that's good. don't keep doing it guys. keep doing it don't keep doing things. it we can wait we can wait guys yeah definitely because <laughs> yeah. once it's out there it's out there all mm-hmm. right so we wanted to talk about you know we, a game that we, we just mentioned assassin's creed or uh, odyssey mick you've been playing mm-hmm. this you mentioned it at yeah. the top of the show uh you yeah. g- give us more of your thoughts Okay, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm gonna say this now, and this might be this might be uh, something that you'll you'll hold you'll hold against me when the time comes. But it is arguably one of the best installments of Assassin's Creed in recent years. Oh, I'm not saying it's dang. the best. I'm not saying it's one of the best. I'm saying it's one of the best in recent years. Because first things first, you don't feel like an assassin. I'm gonna be. Fr- I'll, I've I'll been be hearing that. With you. I've been hearing you, that. You are not an assassin. You're like some Spartan exile. Okay, spoiler alert, because you kind of saw Leonidas there and stuff. Yeah. But then, yeah, basically, and basically, you are a, you are an, a Spartan exile that's a mercenary, and I'm not really into the story, like full onto the story, and I'm brutal. still enjoying it because, oh man, I, I have been playing too much. There's so much side quests. It's an open world concept. You can do whatever the hell you want and your decisions they don't really bear heavy with, with what exactly happened but it does alter the world to a certain extent okay i'm gonna give an example could you play that spoiler alert the holy spoiler alert sound bit we have of course of course well, let me let me yeah. raise the volume real quick yeah 
Holy spoiler alert! Okay, so in one of the quests, uh, when you just start out, you, you're basically in a village that was um, hit with, with a plague. A plague that a lot of people have been dying from. And then okay. you, you basically encounter a priest who wants to kill who wants to kill this family. A family of four who are the survivors of that village. Thing is, they're not necessarily sick. So you have a choice. Whether you let, you let them be killed by the priest or you let them go and live a life because you're like you, you trust their word they're like oh you're not sick well i chose to let them live and i killed the priest and i killed everyone else there and guess what i felt happy i was like oh i feel good and then um like as i progressed through the story and i figured out what what happened mm -hmm. it turns out that they were carrying the plague and they basically killed a lot of people in in wherever I was from, so, so was it's like, your fault that the plague spread. Uh, pretty much. uh, it was yeah, it was my fault that the plague spread. <laughs> it was my fault. No, you, you your demon. starting season was Kefalonia, and the you're, thing is, you're oh, a demon. Some, ter some terrible news from Kefalonia, because Barnabas is the like the, the, the ship guy. He's basically Cass your ship entity. Cassandra the is the demon incarnate. Cassandra. Yeah, so. I was doing some. I thought I was doing something right. I was like, okay, they're not even that sick. But then I was like, oh boy, <laughs> it makes me feel bad because I'm like, oh no, I killed, I killed like the people I, I somehow. You killed more people them. than you saved, pretty much. Is what I happened. killed more people than I saved. Crap. That's not cool. And I've been That's very cool. merciful. I, I've been a very merciful mercenary, and I'm getting scared. I feel like I have to kill a few people now, just to balance it out. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, well, dude, it's. You you have uh, hours of grinding to, to, to I have, kill I have a bunch a, of people. I have a so. ton of grinding to do. Yeah. So just to give you an insight on how like how good this game is, IGN, a reliable source, uh, gave it nine point two <laughs> out of ten. Metacritic, which is a user driven, gave it about eighty three percent. I think it was critic ratings is eighty three percent. I'm not sure with user ratings because it just came out. It's only been a few days. Mm -hmm. A PC gamer, another val, another uh, uh, you know, reliable source mm -hmm. uh, gave it eight, nine out of ten. Digital Trends gave it six out of ten, and of course, Gamespot gave it eight out of ten. And legit, I think, legit. and I want to address that. I, I, I respect them for that because, let's be honest, super grindy games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey is not for everybody. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You want really good dialogue, but you also don't want like super draggy, side quests, repetitive, nonstop. And this is what this game is. It's yeah. a repetitive side quest game. Like you have to do a lot in order for you to progress. But so that hasn't it, changed with Assassin's Creed. No, not necessarily, but more on it makes your life a lot easier. Okay. Because your quests adjust on the level that you have. If, for example, if you are a level eleven, if you are um if you if you are in a zone that's for nine and you are level ten, it'll adjust to level ten. It'll but scale. There's a max cap. It'll scale up. But it, okay. it has a max of like level. Um, sorry, uh, this this zone I think was Megaris. Um, the max was level nine. You get there at level five, my understanding. And then I've already reached level eleven there, and I was only getting level nine gear. But it was a lot easier because a lot of the minions were like at level nine. And different okay. zones will have different levels, and it will also have different. Um, it will also scale differently, based on on whatever. That's excellent. Based on whatever. And, and I like that. I like how they introduced this. Okay, the combat system is also somewhat new because they basically made it a little harder. I mean, okay, so um, Assassin's Creed Origins um, introduced a new uh, battle system. Odyssey took it and made it a little bit more interesting. Um, in my opinion, I like how I like my choice of weapons. I like okay. hunting for legendary gear and stuff. And seeing how how those those play styles would be would would be um, would would affect your gameplay, like how heavy heavier weapons are slower, make you slower, and your timing needs to be a little different as compared to like faster weapons like like dual blades or something like that, where it just makes you a little faster. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool. It's it's pretty cool. But it all it all revolves around that 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 thing that you're holding, which is the spear. Uh, like the most the legendary weapon ever, right? Like you're, you're known for Leonidas. it. Leonidas. The spear. And you're actually known for that. 
Yeah. Like people are saying, oh, you're the Mistios. Mistios is mercenary. Okay. You're the Mistios. Mistios that has the spear of spear of Leonidas, the legendary spear. And you have no idea that it actually has mythical powers or something like that. I don't Spoiler know. alert. It, Spoiler alert again, but I don't know. I mean, I haven't really reached that part yet. All okay. I know is, is that it's. Re I like how the game, you could be as creative as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. I like that each specific character, though the story will not change for each other, their body, their body language, their dialogue, their movement, like even swimming is different from one another. And that oh, between the two characters, between Alexios yes, between and, the two uh, characters. And I like how okay. the, the difference between Cassandra and Alexios is so different from okay. one another that Excellent. you like their approach with certain dialogues would be different. Even their facial expression would be different. I like that. I mentioned that a while ago in the start of the show and it's uh, and like something that that I really really enjoyed from this game is just looking at sunset, looking at how mm. detailed the sunset is when you're looking like hillside, when you're like on top of a mountain or like in a hill and then you just see the, the scenery and you see the the the, the lighting, it's just yeah. so crisp. It's just so crisp. It's so good. So what would you yeah. uh, what would you give this uh, game out of a out of a our usual scale of ten, Nick? What, what, what rating would you give? I'd honestly give it an, an eight point five. I'd nice. honestly give it an eight point five. It's no Red Dead Redemption because mm -hmm. a Red Dead Redemption, like I'm I'm pretty harsh when it comes to I'm pretty like I I, I set high standards. It's like how uh, most of my favorite games are nine out of tens. There's only like one game that's a ten out of ten in my book. Okay. And that is Snake 2 on, on the Nokia 3310. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just playing. Now that's also oh, a nine. Man. That's okay. also a nine. <laughs> but then yeah, <laughs> this is this this deserves an eight. An eight an out eight. of ten. Okay. An uh, eight out of ten. I feel then, like and... it's, oh, it's yeah, so polished. I feel like it's polished. I feel like it's polished enough to, to get me more optimistic and to get me uh, to start looking forward to more installments of this right? excellent oh, yeah. uh, shout out to yeah. lost underscore recalculating. recalculating thank you for the follow and uh kyan kyan you uh in the chat hello and welcome back uh Hi. nick i have i have a huge question for you yeah, 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 yeah. uh probably the no most problem. important assassin's creed odyssey question that we'll have before we move on mm -hmm. uh it, it's a spin-off of our usual after show question and it, and my question is what is your favorite thing in the game and why is it the spartan kick Oh, you read my mind, sir. You read my mind. Dude, <laughs> the Spartan kick is probably the funniest thing you'll ever see in, in <laughs> animation wise. Like if you go like like the, the, the tutorial video of the Spartan kick is so funny because you just see them fly like shh, there's like there's like dust that flies off them. It's like it just to exaggerate how strong that kick was. But you know, as as hilarious as it looks it's actually very effective. Like I I'm thought, sure. I, 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 I first rolled with bull rush, which is this thing where you just stab forward. You, you stab forward like a few meters ahead just to like, just to like knock down your opponent. Mm -hmm. But apparently the Spartan kick is way better because the thing is it cuts through their animation when, when they're like attacking, it has an animation lock. So basically well, if they're trying to slash you and you're in that animation, you don't get hit. You don't get damage. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I found the cheat, but you only get like you only get like four bars of adrenaline anyway, so you, you can't really like spam that skill. So that's yeah. good. So props to props to them for doing that. Props to them yeah. for not there's, exploiting there's that really strong Spaka. kick. Yeah, so, <laughs> so and, funny. The, and, and the thing I'm getting oh. from from what you said from Assass about Assassin's Creed Odyssey mm -hmm. is it's not an assassin game. It's like a 300 the game, like like re, re something like. Like live in that era and be your own hero yeah. in in that setting. Is, is yeah, be a mercenary, make your decisions. Yeah, I, I kind of started feeling bad about my decision about you know that letting that family. Like just thinking about it again, I'm like, Crap. well, too think, bad they're dead, Mick, and you killed more not, people not because of not it. All, no, I, I want to find out if like my, my 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 NPC buddies are still alive, like Marcos and Fuibi. I, I don't know if they're still alive. So I gotta research. I gotta figure out <laughs> what exactly right. happened. Oh, it makes me feel bad. 
that, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what makes video games great and, you know, not stagnant is when you have mm -hmm. decisions you have to make that have repercussions like that. So good, on, good yeah. on Ubisoft for giving you something <laughs> that looks so one-sidedly good to do and then gives you like a, a horrific, horrific result in the end. Horrific result. You're like, hmm, you want to be a good guy, see? Yeah. <laughs> Crap. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's your uh, fault. Well, yeah. Uh, in our last bit of news, we, we, we can breeze over this uh, a little bit because we're, we're almost out of time. Mickey wanted to talk about the Mega SG. Mm, is that right? The Mega SG. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the future. Well, not really the future, but rather it is a way for us to look at the past. <laughs> now. Yeah, but uh, okay. So in, in an article in Polygon, uh, they be analog the creators of this wonderful um, OEM based uh, console known as the OEM Super NT the a, a, a platform that allows you to play your Super Nintendo games the old cartridges that you've had like in your attic somewhere or like your dad's your dad in your dad's basement which is covered in covered in um, in in dust. There we go. <laughs> Covered in dust. Covered in puppies. <laughs> Covered in puppies and dust. Uh, that basically allows you to use them again. <laughs> they are back. And they have announced that they will be releasing um, the Mega SG. Which allows you to play your old Sega Genesis games. The cartridges that you once had. In such a wonderful platform that for some reason does not exist anymore. In our society <laughs> sega so yeah since um it's very nice because the thing is it also uses the same the same uh cloning software that uh not really cloning software but rather it it it, it somewhat mimics the original hardware that is that the cartridge detects in order for it to play yeah and it's very cool. It's this chip called the Altera Cyclone 5 chip or V chip. I don't know. It's the same one that you can find on the Super NT. And now they're placing it on the Mega SG to allow you to be able to play your um, your favorite Sega Genesis games in HD. That's I mean, awesome. it's still going to be it's still going to look like a side scroller, like with all cartoon and stuff. 16 bit, 8 bit, mm -hmm. uh, 32 bit games. But at least it's it's a lot clearer. I mean, oh yeah, there's that, and it's on your HD TV, it's on your 4K TV. I don't know, yeah. but it's it's a cool thing to have, and the reason why I'm just mentioning this is because it um, it begs a very good, it actually brings about a very good question, another good question for you, Harold, to answer, and Shoot. of course for the folks, which is, um, can do you think that certain companies like Analog? can can ride the retro hype train because right uh, now we've been seeing we're we talking about legally um, or or like no i mean like do you think that they can, they can survive the same way that how nintendo is making a ton of money from their snes the new snes and their and how playstation is now releasing their new playstation one classic and how um blizzard is making wow classic which, by the way, I have the demo for since I bought the virtual ticket. Bam! So, yeah. yeah. But then, yeah. Do you think that a, an OEM follower like Analog that has no... Like, they have no affiliation with Nintendo or Sega or anyone else. Can they also survive in this specific market? Yes or no? And why, of course? Well, I th you know, just to make it quick, because, again, we're, we're almost out of time. Yeah, I think it's possible time. because... Nostalgia, as, as we've said in, in shows previously, uh, is a very driving factor for, for purchases like this uh, and legitimizing nostalgia uh, and the fact that you don't have to worry about getting the right emulator and not getting it from the wrong sites. Uh, you know, for, for people who, for the consumers that used to be uh, too young to be able to get something like this uh, and now have a legitimate way of playing yeah, you know, which is which is strange. You know, playing their old cartridges, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm assuming they'll have to replace the batteries for because that's how you used to save. Is the internal cartridge itself had it had its own yeah. battery, for its own clock and stuff. Um, I think there is a market for this. How successful the market will be and how sustainable it is is anyone's guess. But 
I think it's gonna start off big, like it always does, or bigger than than people would think, and maybe yeah. find a, a more niche uh, sustain. You know, it's yeah. not gonna be like, exactly. yeah, they're they're not gonna be able to survive and make millions off of this, but they're also not gonna they're not gonna starve for attention because of how many people fondly remember games of the Sega. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. And also to Human Panda 22 on the chat. Ooh, what is this? That's the Mega SG, by the way. It is a new, it is a new OEM-based console that allows you to play your Sega Genesis games on your TV. Since yeah. you know Sega, your your Sega Genesis might be broken, and seeing as how Sega is not really jumping onto the nostalgia hype train, you know people like uh, companies like Analog will step in and actually do it for them. I don't know if yeah. they have to pay. I don't know if it 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 um I don't think that it it uh breaches their um, intellectual property rights because the thing is it's a mimicking software it's basically an emulator it's a a hardware emulator and they're not touching your original source code at all they're not okay. even trying to recreate the original Sega Genesis but rather they're basically taking the emulator coding putting yeah. it in a chip and allowing you play it on a on a box instead of you know buying a computer yeah. and downloading the emulator software from yeah. the website yeah like they're, they're not preventing people from buying the old games uh, or, or any such you know like <coughs> yeah, sorry yeah oh, oh. <laughs> that's all good but yeah like i think oh man we'll, we'll just have to wait and see for that part yeah you know, uh, like we'll just whole... have to wait and see yeah but it's, it's cool it's cool that this is happening and i am looking forward to the development of this yes i am I am excited for this because, uh, you know, nothing beats nostalgia. <laughs> uh, nothing beats classic, right? Right. I mean, right? that's why Nintendo <laughs> and and the Power Rangers are still around. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh. So oh. that's it, Mick. We, we've tackled the important issues of the week. Well, <laughs> the, the most that we can in in the span of an hour, because yep. video games are the best. Uh, but it's time oh, to end the show. Thank you, everyone, for tuning mm -hmm. in. I know it was a little more serious and chatty than, than normal, but, you know, sometimes you got to do these episodes. Uh, yeah. Huge thanks to our most recent followers, Lost underscore, recal underscore Recalculating, Poloxies, uh, who was a, a participant in the community scrim nights last night, uh, Ensui, Ensui 10, Kurtz 04, Face Riders, Vocalist 5, Ugo Cram, or uh, Ugo Cram. Uh, you go cram that in your, in your homework. Uh, Lima0718, B Baker248, and Wisa. Oh, man. Good stuff, guys. Oh, Human Panda says, already so quick. Yeah, Human Panda's. Oh, what happened to Mick? We lost Mick. Mick. I oh, know, we lost Mick, guys. What oh, happened? you're back. T turn your webcam on. Turn your webcam on. There we go. I'm all back. Right, uh, yeah, okay. It, it, it crashed. It's all good. Discord yeah. does that sometimes. Uh, Human yeah. Pan is actually bummed that we're already ending. It's it's been an hour and forty one minutes. I think Human Pan is used to the very long streams that we have for things like uh, Scrim Night. But uh, I might be streaming this week a little bit of World of Warcraft. Ooh. You know, maybe World tomorrow morning if I can wake and up. I might be and I might be streaming someday. <laughs> so one day, one day, one day. I guess that's that's the dream. That is the dream. Yeah. You guys will find out Mick's real first name. It's spoiler alert. It's Mixtifer. Uh, but thank you also to our most, uh, to our top subs. Uh, Human Panda should have the top sub there because it's not reflecting all his gifted subs, yeah. which we thank him for so much. You you were so thank awesome, you. Human Panda. Uh, so we got Miku P, Human Panda Twenty Two, Sensei Humor, Instadizi, who was our very first sub ever. I might post. Yeah. I might repost that clip in the future. Uh, that, that guy, the Fury bot, who was our number two, I think. Uh, Gabe Bruges, Salon Chen. So underscore underscore sick. I don't know why Francis isn't here. He's, he's He should also be. He's got like two months yeah. already. He already uh, got Furan two Sushu. Yeah. Archer Furan Perez Sushi. and Elder Jin, of course, our future recurring guests. Actually, Elder Jin is already a recurring guest. Uh, looking forward to having him back before the end of the year. Yeah, very soon, very soon. Yeah, very Speaking soon. of Elder Jin, he would not relinquish his crown without any say. He is back on our top bit cheer board with 1,500. Nerf Diva coming in behind him with 1,471. Nope, underscore plays in third with 1,400. Uh, the lovely, if not now, Gwen. Uh, Mershi, Tita Gaming's in Sidisi. Aaron Gaming, 441. Clark, you plays a Cloud Coon, all cheering us on with some bits. Guys, guys. 
If you want to cheer us on with some bits, go ahead. If you want to follow us, hit that follow button. And of course, subscribe if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Uh, Human Panda is... is yeah. <laughs> Human Panda is urging me to, stri to stream. Yes, I will stream. Uh, sorry. Yeah, stream soon. So, so, stream sometimes soon. I want to stream. Uh, sometimes stream. I hide. Uh, but <laughs> I like I like the streaming, you know, the stream. <laughs> All right, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'll be streaming this week. I'll figure out exactly when Human Panda. Check out the Twitters and much more. But yeah, if I can wake up early tomorrow, I will stream. Uh, probably World of Warcraft. I need to I need to level my new characters and of course my nice. my paladin, my my Torin chieftain who was who I was showing earlier on. I have to level Ooh. him again. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. You guys are all awesome. Uh, we, we, we can't do any of this without you guys. Quite literally, you know. Uh, Mick, man, you, it's been an amazing show, as, as always. Yep. Very insightful this time. Working the folks that are watching the stream, listening to the podcast, and so much more find you when you're not on Game Byte. If you want to know uh, more about what I'm thinking about or about, any about opinion I have about any game, you can find me on Twitter. That is at the Fury Bot. Um, you can also find me on um, uh, on this this platform called Twitch. I, uh, you know, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a streamer, but I have a, a page there. I don't know if you guys want to you know watch me play games. So if you know maybe in the future I start playing again, maybe maybe if I start actually streaming, I can you know maybe just drop a follow there. I don't know. Just. <laughs> but then yeah, yeah just, just find me just find me of course here at game bite every wednesday nights 9 p nice. 9 30 p.m philippine standard time or gmt plus 8 or 5 30 a.m california time yeah yeah right, what about you harold where can the fine folks at home find you if you guys want to check me out outside of game but i do host the quit stalling geek cast like i mentioned earlier on with Derek o'brien with Wancho Saldana, sometimes jay sanchez Mondays, Philippine Standard Time, like 12 noon, Philippine Standard Time. Uh, that's uh, that's Mondays for sure now, we promise. Uh, it's about, I think, 9 p.m. California? Yeah, 9 p.m. California time. Uh, we talk about all things geek there. The day after, Tuesday nights here, Philippine Standard Time, uh, usually we have the quit stalling Overwatch community scrim nights. And, you know, me, Diego Z, Heisengard over there in the chat, a.k.a. JM Torres and Sorbetta's PH. We all show up, shoutcast a little bit of Overwatch with the folks who want to play from the community, the local community. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a whole bunch of fun. Check that out. Uh, that's usually 9 p.m. Philippine Standard Time on Tuesdays. And uh, weekly here on Game Byte. You, know, you can find me here. And I'll be streaming more regularly in the coming weeks. Hopefully, you know, if... if Shout casting and all that doesn't get in the way. If getting sick doesn't get in the way. Uh, you can check me out at Harold Plays, uh, twitch.tv slash Harold Plays, or on social media at Harold Plays. Mick, uh, the folks at home can find us on Quit Stalling yeah. more if they pay attention to our social media, like facebook.com slash Quit Stalling Us, nope. or Twitter at Quit Stalling Us. Uh, they can also find us on Instagram, where I recently posted a photo of Diego and JM sharing a headset because of budget cuts. Instagram at quit stalling of course on youtube you can find us youtube.com slash quit stalling where all the videos are there they're yeah. uploaded they're updated also on twitch check out that videos tab uh, twitch.tv slash quit stalling where you can find all our stuff as well and if you're on a commute if you're in the gym and you want to listen to quit stalling you can either listen to us on spotify yes game Bite and the quit yeah. stalling geek cast are on Spotify. Those are also newly updated and up to date. Oh my god, it took forever, but the backlog is done. Uh, check those out. All the episodes are there. Or if you want a more, you know, tangible and, and solid version, well, it's not really tangible or solid, but if you want a saved version, you can download the podcast on iTunes. Oh, sorry, the Apple Podcast Store uh, or Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and so much more. If it's a podcatcher, we are there check us out thank you so much everyone for tuning in we will see you guys next week same butt time same butt channel but till then get off your butts and quit style we'll see you guys next week bye everybody bye uh